Good morning. Good morning. Hey, do you know what, um, sun what Sunday this is in our church? Do you know what we call today? Can you put a, like, sad look on your face? It's called Celebration Sunday. <laughs> Come on, roll your shoulders a little bit. Kind of got to look really sad. Celebration Sunday. <laughs> That's not how we do it around here. When we celebrate, we do this. I got to teach you something. Watch my feet. See that? It's Celebration Sunday. We're going to celebrate. Um, now, when you celebrate, when you guys, like, do something really great and it's time to celebrate, how do you celebrate? Very quietly, right? Put your hands together for a golf clap. Let's celebrate. Perfect, perfect. No way, no way. We celebrate when we celebrate. You know in the Bible, celebration is really, really loud. When they celebrate, it's loud. So I need you gals to help me out with a little bit of celebration noise, all right? So I brought some noisemakers. Oh, look what I have. This is offensively loud. Here, ring that. Make that. There you go. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, oh, here's one. Here's one. This and that. See what you can do with that to make some noise. Yeah, you'll need this too. Yeah, bang it. Bang it. Celebrate. Or it could be like this. Yeah, all right. Ringing and banging. Same time. Same time. Oh, this is good. That's good. That's good. All right, you ready? You got the idea? Like her. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. See, we got to decide here, all right? Bell, banging, banging. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, I saved one for you. Uh, you might need to sit down for this one. See this beautiful little lid? Isn't that fun? Here, try it. Try it. Nice. Bell, banger, bang it. And come on, come on. All at once. Yeah! And stop. Okay, that's celebration. In the Bible, when they celebrated, they did not golf clap. They celebrate loud. God wants us to celebrate loud. Can you try the feet thing? Can you guys do that? That's good, that's good. Those feet aren't moving. And noise, come on, noise. You're supposed to be helping. That's celebration, all right. You got that idea. Now, I'm starting to think about this. We're about ready to celebrate some people, high school graduates and college graduates and people that have been in the church for like 50 years. This is cool. Should I let you guys, like, make noise during this? What do you think? Tell you what, let's get the noise out of the way, right? Because we're about ready to celebrate. Mrs. O'Donnell's going to come up and lead us in celebration to congratulate people. Do not sit in your seat and do this. That is not a celebration. Noise, you ready? Okay, now, I'm going to go one, two, three. You got to do the hitch step. Do you see what I do with my arms, too? Right? And then noise, and I'll make it stop. Okay? You ready? Are you ready with the bell? Ready with the banger? Ready with the pot? Ready with the second banger? Ready with your hands? Ready with your feet? Ready to celebrate? There you go. There you go. And noise! Come on! Come on! Perfect. Now, kiddos, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know if you listen to anything I say when I'm doing my sermon to the, the adults out there, but I'm going to tell us why we celebrate this morning. There's actually a reason for it, and I think I know what the reason is. I'm going to tell everybody a little later. Let me pray for us and thank God for celebration, and then I think you better leave your noisemakers here, and we'll just clap for people, but not golf clap, okay? Jesus, thank you for, for making us want to celebrate. We just can't help it. It's part of the way you designed us. So thank you that we have reasons to celebrate and that celebration feels good. And now as we celebrate people who have done great things, we help us to just honor them and want to be like them. We pray in your name. Amen. Thanks, ladies.
we needed a second verse, didn't we? We were ready. It is Celebration Sunday, and, and I'm going to try to explain to you why we can't help but celebrate. I think I discovered the answer to that. Um, but I'm going to ask the Lord to bless what I say this morning, so let's pray. Father, I thank you for the fact that we do celebrate. We can't help it. I thank you that you wired us that way. I thank you for the celebration that we've done today as we celebrate our graduates, as we celebrate kiddos progressing through school, as we celebrate our choir and what they, um, how they just pour into our worship. But Lord, we want to celebrate you. And I pray that you'll help us as we open your word to celebrate you and discover things that maybe we haven't thought about before, or maybe we have and we just need a, a, a reminder of them. But Lord, we ask you to speak to us today and, and change us so that we're equipped to go out as we leave um, church today. We pray in your name, amen. All right, so today's Celebration Sunday, which is we celebrate. It also signal, signals the beginning of summer, which means summer school for some of you. So I've written a quiz, and it's a three-question quiz that'll have an essay later. Um, if you do well on the quiz, you don't have to come to summer school. Uh, I didn't say you don't have to come to church. I said you don't have to come to summer school, all right? So they're pretty easy, I think, but that's what the person who writes the quiz always says. Question number one, multiple choice. When you get in a car to drive a car and you're the driver, you're in the driver's seat, which pedal is the accelerator? Is it A, the one on the left, B, the one in the middle, C, the one on the right, or D, you just click your heels and hope your car will go? All right? Uh, you got it? You get, lock it in? Right, right. The, correct. It's the right pedal over there for most cars anyway. Question number two. You do all right on that, on question number one? Question number two. Um, when you're in the bathroom after you've done your business and you go to wash your hands, if your bathroom sink is an old-fashioned old, um, one with two handles, one of them is hot, one of them is cold, A, Hot is on the left, cold is on the right. B, cold is on the left, hot is on the right. C, I don't wash my hands after I go to the bathroom. <laughs> you laugh, but if we actually like watched and surveyed people, you'd be surprised. Okay, you probably did okay on that one too. Uh, we better go on to a harder one. Uh, reading is critical to brain health, even during the summer. So picture the last book you read. It just happens to be that I have my Bible here. Do you read, which page do you read first when you open up to the chapter you want? Um, do you read A, the left page first and the right, or B, the right page first and the left, or C, do you just read the little um, summary of the book on the back cover and pretend like you read the book, or D, do you need to go to summer school? Yeah, okay, so those were way too easy. Let's go back to question number one. What pedal is the accelerator? It's the one on the right. Why is that? Why is that? Why'd they put the accelerator on the right side? Why is it on the left side? Why isn't it in the middle? Why isn't it somewhere on your steering wheel? Why is that? Because it's by design. Someone decided a long time ago, accelerators on the right, don't get it confused with the brake, it won't go well. That's how it's designed. So today's Celebration Sunday. Maybe you guys don't think about stuff like this, but I do. So why do we celebrate? I mean, it's fun to celebrate. We bang on pots and pans. We congratulate people, we give gifts. I mean, it feels good to celebrate, right? Uh, Ron, sorry, I'm not a golfer. I just, it just never became part of my habit. But um, I remember one time I had a chip shot that actually like went on the green and rolled to toward the hole. And when it went in the hole, probably by accident with me, I celebrated. No, not at all. When you drop the putt, what do you do? You go nuts, right? When you make the basket, when you finish planting your garden, well, that's before you go put Bengay on your lower back. But when you accomplish a task, what do you do? You celebrate. You can't help it. It's just, it's in your DNA. By your designer, just like a car engineer put the accelerator on the right side of your floorboard in your car, 
by design, God wired us for celebration. It's in our DNA. We can't help it. Um, in the book of Proverbs, in the middle of your Bible, don't go there, but in the middle of your Bible, in the book of Proverbs, it says, a longing fulfilled is sweet to the soul. That's why when the ball drops, you go, yes, it feels so good when you do that. You can't help it. It's wired in your DNA. If you think about it, when, when God has longings fulfilled, do you ever think about God having longings fulfilled? When God launches the redemption plan, and he has his son come and become a baby, God announces it very quietly that Jesus is now on earth. It's kind of like a golf clap at the universe level. Or maybe it's not like that at all. Maybe God sends a light show and hundreds of angels singing so loudly that the sheep are waking up going, what is that? And all of a sudden, shepherds go to this little obscure town and they take their, their gifts of praise and, and God messes with the astrological alignment of stars and sh uh, wise men see this and they go, oh, we know how to read the stars and get direction out of them. And they travel for a couple of years and they bring presents to Jesus because wired into our DNA as a reflection of our creator is the desire to celebrate. You think about some of the stories that Jesus told when, when he was um, trying to explain his kingdom to people. And Jesus is walking around and goes, it's kind of like this. There's this man who has two sons. One of them is a deadbeat. He cashes in his, uh, his inheritance. He's the prodigal son. He goes away. He lives horribly. I mean, just partying and drinking and sleeping around. And then he is bankrupt, and he's eating hog food, bad thing for a, for a Jewish boy to eat. And, he, and it dawns on him, I could be my father's servant and do better than I'm doing right now. And, and, and when he goes back, the prodigal son, his dad greets him. And what does he do? Put him in the cellar? Take away his car keys? No. He throws a party because that's what dads do when their kids come home. Jesus tells a similar story, only this time it's sheep. There's a hundred sheep and one of them wanders off. The shepherd goes and finds the sheep. And when he finds that sheep, he takes it back to the, the, the farm. And what does he do? He pens it up. He chains it to the barn. No. He throws a party and invites all his friends. Similar story, Jesus says a woman lost a coin in her house. She turns the house upside down until she finds her coin, and then she calls her neighbors, and they celebrate. We are wired for celebration. We can't help it. It's in our DNA. One of the most sacred celebrations in the Old Testament is the Passover. And I don't need to explain Passover to you. You know what that is. But in the Passover celebration, a key element of the Passover is this thing called Jesse. I'm sorry, I'm going to mess up this Hebrew word, okay? You're going to help me if I mess it up too badly. The Haggadah. The Haggadah is the telling of the stories of Passover so that during the celebration of Passover, the next generation gets the Haggadah, the story of what God did in the past. One of the reasons we celebrate is because we can't stand it. We are wired to go, yes, when the, when the golf ball drops into the hole. We can't help it. Another reason is because we're passing it on to the next generation. This is what God has done in my life. Yes, it feels good. And so we celebrate the Haggadah. So on the first Sunday of June, we're having a Haggadah. How bad is that pronunciation, Jesse? Haggadah, Haggadah. I knew you would know, okay? All right, all right. We're having our Haggadah, all right? Um, but I want to I wanna look at, at, a, at a time in the Old Testament and see if we can learn something because the Jews know how to celebrate better than we do. That's just the way it is. If you have your Bibles, it's in the Old Testament. It's Nehemiah chapter 12. Okay, so if you're thinking Ezra, Nehemiah, Ezra, Job, Psalms. Psalms is the middle of the Bible, so it's like four books before the middle of your Bible. Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Nehemiah chapter 12, and oh my goodness, one of the things they do when they celebrate um, Jewish style is they invite a bunch of people who have names that I can't pronounce. So get ready for some mispronunciations. In Nehemiah chapter 12, let me, get, let me catch up where, what, what's going on in the book of Nehemiah. In Nehemiah chapter, tw chapter 1, Nehemiah 
a Jew goes to Jerusalem and he sees that the wall around Jerusalem is in decay. The rocks have fallen off. There are whole holes in the wall of defense around the city of Jerusalem. And the gates that hang on the gateposts that are made out of wood, they've been burned up by enemies. So this is a very vulnerable city. And it breaks the heart of Nehemiah. So the rest of the book of Nehemiah is Nehemiah organizing the people um, to rebuild the wall and restore the gates of Jerusalem. And it takes 52 days for them to restore this wall. And here's one of the things I love about the book of Nehemiah. You think if you're going to rebuild a wall around a city and it's a stone wall, you'd go find some masons. You'd go find some union guys that could get the job done. But in Nehemiah, 